are beautiful, beautiful souls. So I'm so sorry that this is a day late. Um, but in consolation to that, I had so many messages come through when I was flying um, back from Melbourne that I truly do believe that um, that's why. Um, one, because I had my graduation Wednesday, I wouldn't have been able to do anything to record it anyway. Um, two, I wouldn't have been able to upload it because I didn't really have stable internet, um, whereas we have broadband here. And three, because I just I experienced some exponential experience and information come through yesterday. So, uh, and also, maybe this is why too, number four, because I got my brand new tarot deck come through. Um... Okay, so I'm going to do a quick one um, today and it's I haven't even really thought about this, so it's pretty on the fly. Usually I have a bit of an idea of what I'm doing, um, but I did pre-print this gorgeous symbol out. So while I was away, I did experience, I spend a lot of time at night and I have a lot of messages come through from different kinds of places. I'm a really... I really have no barrier when it comes to connection um, with different people, spirits, uh, angels, and um, I, I just call them otherworldly beings, you know, from other star systems basically. And um, I respect them more to just call them extraterrestrials because they truly are um, very informative and beautiful um, energy forms as well. So... Um, I have no barriers when it comes to these kind of connections and I don't have a choice. So I do, you know, I always ask who it is and if it doesn't feel good, I only ever let positive um, messages in. But when it comes to sometimes, it's like I'm on a meditative journey and I'm going to get taken somewhere. And this symbol was one that I researched through. I've been doing a lot of research on Nostradamus and Edgar Case, and lots of research on... Um, yeah, I've had lots of faces come through. I had a face come through when I was in the shower at my friends the other night. And we did some research. I had some really awesome messages come through. And, and we were both looking up and we were going down the rabbit hole of ancient symbolism. And this one came up. So this is a overall universal symbol of unity. And it's a very calming geometrical um, symbol. And I just felt like I needed to print it out. So I think I'll be using this a lot more in my work. Um, it's just a, it's a very symbolic ancient um, symbols. I think a lot more symbols are going to be coming through for me. All right. So I'm going to get on with the weekly message. I've got the pyrite there for mental clarity. And the clear quartz there is, um, oh, there's a, you know, spiritual connective force there. And, and it's a clearing as well. So we've got that beautiful um, clear quartz. So I'm actually going to start with the wild, with a new deck, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it out and I'm going to pick from, I haven't actually shuffled it. Um, and I'm going to pick from where it's, I need to be. All right, let's see. What have we got? Why are you being difficult? Okay. The high priestess. Well, I'm not surprised at that at all. And it's a cat. All right, what's this one? Come on. Father of Swords. I'd say there's a wise connection there. An owl. I love this deck too because it's got animals and I'm such a shaman. <laughs> that animals are so important to me. And we've got a horse. Okay. So we've got cups. All right, I'm going to leave them there for that. I'm only going to pick one Rider weight today. And the Rider weights, I am also doing a similar thing. Okay, that's a good card. Pentacles are always good. Pentacles are always around abundance and when they're upright as well. So um, this is one, you know, around abundance of um, wise abundance. So uh, inheritance. Or getting money from that kind of um, space. I'll, I'll do a bit of a deep meaning in a second. So I'm going to pick one from Circle of Life. 
Nine of Chalices. Where do you go? These are beautiful cards. I love this. The circular. I love circles. So circular cards are always a hit with me. Okay, so uh, first card off the rank. We've got um, Archangel Michael cards. And we're talking about new beginnings and fresh starts. So the prayer is, thank you for bringing new opportunities and offering support and for helping me release and heal my past. Fill me with trust as I experience these life changes. And you may have noticed the energy moving towards that. I've had a lot of release this week. It's very interesting because we had a new moon. Um, but I felt like I had a lot of time um, healing some spaces, knowledge, acknowledging them, and then releasing. And I was a bit surprised because I usually do that after the full moon. Um, but for some reason, it was, I mean, it was a really heavy new moon for me. So I'm going to guess it was like that for other people as well. Um, so yeah, new beginnings and fresh starts. So the card is about as one chapter of your life closes, another one is beginning to bloom right now. You may only notice the first inklings of new growth in your life. This card is to encourage you to keep going, stay with faith, keep a positive outlook. Healing is imminent. You'll experience condi better conditions in your life. And, um, it's about improving relationships and relationships are blooming. So let the past go. So that's a really good card at the moment, uh, moving past the new moon into the lion's gate. Okay, so the next card is Harmonize, Peach Calcite. And this card is around recognizing angelic gentle peach hue. And that results in a blend between gold and pink. And this card is a powerful healing tool. It, its gifts um, and simple purpose is harmonization and it carries the highest mental ability of the crown chakra connected to the spirit into the body for realization, which delivers a connection to universal mind. So this card is saying it's easy to let life be divided into little parts for easy management, that there comes a time to clean all of that, which no longer serves you or contributes to the whole so this presence with you today is letting you know it's time to unite unite all parts of yourself. So I'm talking about restoring those spaces and restoring your energy because we carry from experience so much cellular memory. And that seems to be where all of my work kind of happens. When I went into Pellaway Energy Healing, it was because I didn't really know why I was doing it. But it helps regenerate the cellular memory and the DNA. And this card um, does that as well. So um, it's calling back your energies and committing to self. So this affirmation for this card is power and love unite. I am at harmony. My sound is infinite. And the keywords are harmonize, unconditional love, personal power balance. So uh, Lion's Gate coming up. We've just had personal power really come up um in this last new moon as well and coming up for the full moon as well old emotional patterns so that will be coming up for the full moon as well with um aquarius so full moon in aquarius always brings up old emotional patterns um being a sign um a fa uh, so focused around emotions um stress addiction unite the parts angelic messengers threefold Flame, Service Bones, and Lord Maitreya. Um, okay, so what's next? Choose wisely. Let's have a look. Choose wisely. Okay, so this card comes forth when you have a vision or goal that you want to achieve, but too many choices, scattered energies, and unrealistic expectations prevent you from attaining what you desire. Opportunities are bountiful, but there's a decision to be made at this time. This card reminds you that the options now around you may appear to have all the influence and power, but in reality, you're in control and responsible for all the choices you make. Time to think, analyze, and carefully look at the different possibilities. So I've been doing a lot of this as well lately because I have to completely um, tone down a lot of what I do. Um, not tone down, what's the word? Uh, like become, have a bit more of a narrow view, um, narrow down, you know, where I'm putting it across to, who I'm putting it across to, things like that, because uh, it's getting quite specific in what I need to do. And um, some of the stuff may not fit anymore. Um, and, 
yeah, we ha- we're really having to do that at the moment. The energy is like you might feel really scattered in the head. It's like I don't know what I'm meant to be doing. And I definitely feel like that because I've just gone into a whole new beginning of moving into stay and I don't have work. My husband doesn't have work and I'm kind of sitting there going, okay, what am I meant to be doing? And we're meant to be resting and it's the constant um, message that I get through. So um, the importance is to connect to yourself and then with mind, body, soul connection, um, you can build on that vision. And if you're interested in doing the obstacle meditation, which also helps um, get past your biggest obstacle and then create a vision board, um, I will also link that with the energy message email. So energy, yeah, weekly energy message email so that you can have a look at that. It's, you can do it any time of the year. Um, I'll just show you my vision board, which I have up on the wall. So this is my vision board. This is like kind of my vision ball wall. Um, but all of, some of this has already actually happened, which is really weird. Wind of change, change the way you move. Medieval wisdom comes through the shaman work. Yoga, I'm going to be working in a yoga studio. Community. Um... Yeah, so taking the taking this journey, allowing myself to muck about, but also uh, work a little in giving me new insights and inquisition, inspiration. Yeah, so feel connected. Get it. Humanity has been a huge part of my changes. So that's my vision board that I did after the obstacle meditation, three pages full. So, um, okay, so the nine chalices is um, really focusing on you've had beautiful ideas, you've had these great, um, you know, grand ideas, but it's about executing them. So transforming those ideas into doing. And once again, like I was saying about narrowing down and going, okay, what exactly do I need to be doing? It's like we can't really do, um, f- you know, something that doesn't truly align with us now. It's really becoming very clear. So that card is hugely about that. Um, this card, like I said, was about inheritance, wealth. It's about um, abundance. So creating abundance long term um, or having abundance come into your life from from, you know, older persons or inheritance or something around that. But I think the biggest thing about that is like having that vision and creating um, a manifest in the way that works for you. So um, in that way, the manifest comes through um, and um, it's about manifest. It's about putting out what you want without anything attached to it. So we're not saying, oh, I want this holiday, blah, blah. It's just saying, I'm in this space and I want um, this to come forth for me and not really think about where it's coming from or how you're going to work towards it, but just manifesting that goal um, in a way of positive, just positive guidance for yourself, if that makes sense. Um, So not attaching emotions to it. All right, so I'm going to look at these beautiful cards now. And we've got the High Priestess that came forth. And the High Priestess um, is a very calm, still um symbol psychic wisdom and mystery so being in that still place the high priestess can access realms that others pass by without noticing the vast world of intuition dreams and mystery um high priestess reminds you to listen more closely to the voice within other times it's a sign to look past the obvious to find what's being kept hidden or secret within a given situation acknowledge your shadows Okay, so, and in this, the Father of Swords comes through, and he is fair and analytical. So I would say wise as well. There's a wisdom that comes through. So the Father of Swords has a gift of perception, a distinct ability to remove himself emotionally from a situation, to truly see it from all angles. Um, Respected by others who usually describe the Father of Swords as fair or just and responsible for deep ties to his family. So, yeah. Similar to this card that comes through, um, but this one's more about abundance. So protection, protection of family, um, deep connection with family. So intuitive guidance and deep connection with family. And then we've got the five of cups. 
All right, so I'm going to tell 1,000% I know why this card's come through. So this is the Five of Cups. This card has come through because the August 12th is the um, Mercury Retrograde. Now, Mercury Retrograde isn't a bad thing, but it can start. You can feel like you're going backwards, basically. Um, and it starts to get you to work through some things that you may still need to work through. And this can be really frustrating. Now, the important thing to remember about Mercury Retrograde is to not sign anything. So don't sign a lease. Don't um, move into um, a job. Try not to do anything brand new because it will not work. So um, the Five of Cups indicates a time of something slipping away. There could be disappointment. Um, it appears when... You're not to make hasty decisions. Um, maybe helpful to look at the type of expectations you place on others because you may have a disappointment in what they do. So too many expectations on others. So it is about taking back personal power and that came through last week as well. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, very cool reading today. A bit more of a different um, energy to it, I found. Um, using these cards as well. I just love the animal imagery. It's just that little bit different to the right away. So, um, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed um, the weekly energy message. And if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to email me or contact me on Facebook um, or Instagram. Have a great um, week and I will connect with you next week for the Lionsgate. Very exciting. Bye.